Rao and family of Dr. N. G. P. Rao. Distinguished directors from different institutes, colleagues from CG centers and international organization, Dr. Dube, CEO from Adventa, and also very important persons, uh, Dr. N. G. P. Rao, Memorial Lecture, uh, uh, this awardee in Sorghum, Dr. Bhag. Anwar Singh Rana, in Millet, Dr. Ananda Sitarama, Parul Millet, Dr. Kedar Nath Rai. And also, I can see here our guest of uh, uh, this program, many directors of different institutes and old colleagues and family and friends. First of all, I would like to welcome you all at, at this very important occasion of the celebration of the lifetime achievements of none other than Dr. N. G. P. Rao. And besides that, I would say that today is a very important occasion for all of us because we are celebrating uh, Teacher's Day throughout the country. And the teachers like Dr. N. G. P. Rao and Dr. R. S. Paroda, who has been mentor for many scientists, scientists of this generation, and who has been working very hard to inculcate the habit of scientific temper in the new generation of science. I could see from the profile of Dr. N.G.P. Rao that they, he has spent more than 18 years at IARI, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi from 1961 to 78. And it's really a very rare occasion to see that uh, Agricultural scientists receiving Santi Saru Patnagar Prize in Biological Sciences, the most distinguished award. And when I saw his profile, it uh, reminded me that working at IARI New Delhi itself is a great honor and uh, great responsibility when you work at an institute like IARI, IAMR, or Decrease at. So, being a teacher at Indian Agriculture Research Institute, I have been associated with all throughout my career for more than 20 years at IRI, as a teacher in agriculture biotechnology. And I would like to remember all my teachers at this very auspicious occasion and pay my tribute to all of them, those who have given us a different way of thinking and a different way of looking around, which is distinct from the general population. Scientists are born to work differently. Scientists are always teachers as well as students. We always try to pass our knowledge to the new generation and we try to learn from our superior our mentors like R.S. Paroda and the quality of Professor N.G.P. Rao. This is a very important occasion and I would like to congratulate Dr. Tonapi and the Society for Military Research for constituting and also for N.G.P. Rao Foundation and the trustee NGP Rao Foundation for constituting this very important uh, NGP Rao Memorial Lifetime Achievement Award uh, under the aegis of Society for Millet Research, for which he has been, I think, the founder president. Not only that, his contributions in, in, in the area of sorghum research, which have been elaborated by my colleague, 
Dr. Jacqueline. Uh, I think the way we think how crops are developed, varieties are bred. Dr. NGP Rao was thinking way back in 1964, at least I was not born at that time, when he developed first hybrid in uh, sorghum. So one can imagine the foresightedness of these individuals who has given their life to the science and to the society and his hybrids and varieties and also genetic material which he has developed in, in case of sorghum. And not only that, the trained human resource which he has developed is now taking the lead from his work and serving the society in more effective manner. So I am really very happy to be part of this particular celebration. And uh, thank you, Dr. Tonapi, for inviting me. And I would like to reserve my other comments for at the end of this particular session. So thank you very much and welcome you all again for this very important celebrations. Back to Dr. Tonapi. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, uh, now, before we... Uh, look into the profile of Dr. N.G.P. Rao. Uh, we have a small video, uh, Guru Vandana. Basically, today is his, it is his birthday. So we thought it will be a, a great occasion to pay our tributes to a great teacher to whom we have all imbibed the best of the things what we can do in crop improvement research. Dr. Ilangwan. Elan, sound is not there. It is not coming, Elan. Elan, go on. Go on, just pause it. Replay. I think uh, your audio is muted in your system. Please. Thank you, Ilangon. Uh, now I would like to briefly go through the profile and the contributions which we need to remember today. A great personality from whom we learned so much. The contributions of Dr. N. G. P. Rao are the worthy, worthy aspects that we need to be remembering forever. About Dr. N. G. P. Rao, we would like to say, born in 1927 has been acclaimed as the father of hybrid sorghum for leading the green revolution in sorghum in rain-fed semi-arid regions of India. Dr. Rao had his B.S. agriculture degree in 1949 from Agriculture College Bapatla with second rank and postgraduate associate program in botany at Indian Agricultural Research Institute, New Delhi in 1953 with first rank and gold medal. 
He received his PhD in 1968 from Bihar University. He served as research assistant at Department of Agriculture, Hyderabad between 1950 to 58 and as a lecturer in agricultural botany at Osmani University in Hyderabad, 58 to 60, before moving to IRI in 1961, where he worked till 1978. He served as sorghum botanist there and also associate coordinator and project coordinator of All India Coordinated Sorghum Improvement Project. As national coordinator of All India Coordinated Sorghum Improvement Project, he led the visionary research that transformed traditional risk for subsistence sorghums in India to significantly higher productive and stable hybrids and varieties. The first commercial sorghum hybrid CSH1, which was released in 1964, along with other permulate hybrids, created the seed industry in India. The shortest ever commercial hybrids uh, were built in the plant breeding history. The average yields of the rain-fed hybrids could be stabilized at about two to two and a half tons per hectare against a national average of 400 to 500 kgs for the local varieties. The maximum yields up to seven tons could be realized under optimum conditions. Between 65 to 78, nine commercial sorghum hybrids, CSH1 to CSH9, and eight high-yielding varieties, CSV1 to CSV, ATAR were released for cultivations with profound, which created profound impacts in the dryland areas in the states of Maharashtra, Karnataka, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, covering an area between eight to 10 million hectares. In 78, Dr. Rao was selected as ICR Professor of Eminence and served at IRI Regional Station, Hyderabad, up to 80. Later from between 80 to 83, he served as regional sorghum breeder for West Africa in Ikrisat uh, at Samaru, Zaria, Nigeria. During 1984 to 87, Dr. Rao also shouldered the responsibility as vice chancellor of Mar Mar Marathwada Agriculture University, Parmani. Uh, and during between 87 to 92, he was the chairman of Agricultural Scientists Recruitment Board, Indian Council of Agriculture Research. Dr. Rao was confirmed with many awards and titles in the course of his distinguished career. These included the prestigious national awards, CSIR Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize for Biological Sciences in 64, and ICR Rafi Ahmad Kidwai Prize for Plant Breeding in 1974-75. As a Distinguished Scientist Award of Andhra Pradesh Government in 2003 and 2008, Farmer Organization Awards, National uh, Club mm -hmm. of Farmers Award, Krishik Samaj Awards, Thank Industry you. Award, Vaswik Award, Iceman Award, and awards by scientific uh, societies and academies and universities. He served as President of Indian Society of Genetics and Plant Breeding in 81 and 82 and he was founder president of Society for Millets Research in 2004. In fact, uh, uh, he was the pioneer in transferring the erstwhile Sorghum Society money, which was the seed money that created the creation of Society for Millets Research. He was also elected to the uh, fellow of three national science academies, INSA, NAS, and National Academy of Agricultural Sciences. So this is in short, of a great contribution, which we are all remembering today. So this is our tribute to a great teacher, a great researcher, a great scientist, Dr. N.G.P. Rao. So thank you very much, sir. Now uh, we will go. We are uh, at IIMR and Indian uh, Council of Agriculture Research. We are very proud to dedicate our crop work facility area, which is newly constructed, which houses the crop improvement activities of all the breeders in sorghum, pearl millet, and small millets, and also houses the facilities of cold storage to carry forward their advancing generations, which uh, we built it at a uh, cost of about three and a half crores, was recently inaugurated by Honorable Union Minister of Agriculture very recently, this building we are dedicated, dedicating today as NGP Rao Crop Improvement Facility at Indian Institute of Millets Research, Indian Council of Agriculture Research. Dr. Ilangon, you can.
Yeah, so thank you very much. So uh, before uh, we go to the next, this thing, now we have a, an important occasion to listen to our uh, very honorable Dr. Raj Parodaji, Dr. Padma Bhushan, Dr. Raj Parodaji, who in fact, uh, when we discussed, he selected the topic, future of sorghum and millets. So, sir, we would like to listen from you the first ever NGP Rao Memorial Lecture from you today, sir. We are all very eager to listen to you. So, Dr. Raj Paroda, sir. Before that, introduction. Yeah, so uh, in, uh, Dr. Ilangon will introduce Dr. Raj Paroda, sir. It's my great privilege to introduce the world's renowned agriculture scientist, Dr. Raj Paroda, sir. Dr. Raj Paroda, former Director General, Indian Research ICAR, and Secretary Dare, Government of India, holds a unique perspective as an accomplished scientist, able research administrator, and development practitioner. He is well-known for modernization and strengthening of the national agricultural research system in India as well as in many countries. Government of India has recognized his contributions to the advancement of agriculture by bestowing on him the prestigious National Padma Bhushan Award. He is a recipient of several awards and recognitions, the Rafi Ahmad Kitwai Prize, ICAR Team Research Award, FICCI Award, Gopal Prakash Varshan Award, BP Paul Gold Medal, Borlap Award, Mahindra Sirumani Award, Dr. A. B. Joshi Award, and U.S. Avasti Ipko Award, etc. Dr. Raj Paroda has been the founder chairman of Global Forum on Agricultural Research based at FAO Group. He also served as president of the Indian Science Congress and president of the National Academy of Agricultural Sciences. 19 universities have awarded him DSC, honoris and CASA, degree including Ohio State University and Indian Agricultural Research Institute. He is the fellow of all science academies in India, Third World Academy of Sciences, Russian Academy of Agricultural Sciences, and honorary member of American Society of Crop Science and American Society of Agronomy. He also served for more than two decades as Executive Secretary of Asia Pacific Association no, of Agricultural no, Research no, Institutions, no, APARI, FAO, Hong Kong. Recently, Dr. Raj Pavoda worked as Chairman of Farmers Commission of Haryana. He had also served on ACIR, CAPA, and WMO Advisory Committees, Chairman of Board of Trustees of the Prison, and Member of Finance Chemist Committee of CGIAR. He is a member of CGIAR, CIMIT, and Board Director of International Fertilizer Development Center, IFDC. Currently, Dr. Raj Paroda is the Founder Chairman of the Trust for Advancement of Agricultural Sciences, TAS, New Delhi. Sir, the whole Millets family from ICIR, IAMR, ICRISA, ASCRP on Sorghum, Corn Millet, and Small Millets, and other sister ICR institutes, including the scientists, technical, administrative staff, researchers, and students are eagerly waiting to listen to you on the lecture on the future of Sorghum and Millets. Request you to deliver the lecture. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Uh, am I visible also? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. Is it? You can see you. Okay. Sir. Good morning. Thank yes, you sir. very much for very generous introduction. It's a great pleasure to be with you all today on Dr. NGP Rao Memorial Lecture, uh, Dr. Jacqueline Hughes, Dr. Tia Sharma. Dr. Vilas Tonapi, Mrs. Rao, and his, uh, Dr. Rao's family members, 
I see some old colleagues and friends also attending uh, more than 250 by now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's indeed a great privilege for me to speak to you today uh, on this uh, occasion, which coincides with 93rd birthday celebration of Dr. N.P. Rao. And as was also mentioned, today being the Teacher's Day. <coughs> the topic uh, about which uh, Dr. Turnapi mentioned, uh, I, I thought that uh, it's high time that we start looking at future of sorghum and millets. Sorghum is also broadly now considered among millets. And when we talk of future, future could be two sides of the coin. One could be very bright and the other could be very bleak. We would like to see whether we have a bright future for sorghum and millets. And that's what is uh, the subject of today's uh, deliberation that I thought uh, would possibly interest you. I'd like to briefly also mention, much has already been said about his contributions, but he has been a distinguished plant breeder par excellence considered not only India, but abroad as father of hybrid, had served various positions, including the highest, that is of chairman, agriculture scientist recruitment board, and a unique distinction of receiving two prestigious awards, one of ICR, Rafi Ahmed Kedwai, and the other of CSIR, Dr. S.S. Bhatnagar. Of course, he had mentored, again, great scientists like Dr. Vidya, Bushnam and Dr. B.S. Rana today, who is going to receive also recognition for his great uh, achievements working with him. Now, when we look at uh, Dr. Rao's contributions, uh, I think uh, the, the entire scenario changed after his for one year in Nebraska, where he could uh, see the play of dwarfs from hybrids and brought with him the material when he returned and he started work on dwarf sorghum hybrids. Uh, is it internet problem? Are you able to hear me? We are able to hear you, sir. Okay. Uh, okay, because some signal came and I thought, uh, so starting with CSH1, he came out with many hybrids and his CSH9 is, is still covering around uh, 12 to 15 percent area. And uh, the, the process enabled Indian seed sector to grow very fast. In this context, I would also like to briefly take time to uh, tell my own association with NDP Rao. He has actually been a well-wisher, even a mentor, and I would say, uh, had been encouraging me all through. Since I had joined at that time as a young uh, scientist after coming from UK, doing my post doctorate as forage breeder at HAU Hisar, uh, he especially assigned me the responsibility to initiate in his coordinated program, a network on forage sorghum evaluation. Having received this kind of recognition being young, I thought it was a great learning experience. And uh, no doubt in the process, uh, one of my varieties uh, was also released, which is first multicultural forest variety uh, at the national level and is still used as a uh, parent for breeding programs. He encouraged me to write a book on forest sorghum. And uh, let me also tell you my work uh, team, I got team research award for sorghum forage program. Having said this, let us start uh, looking at uh, the era of green revolution. I'm not going to tell you what we achieved, starting from period of scarcity to that of self-sufficiency, having more than 70 uh, million tons of buffer in our stocks today. But uh, in the process, certainly two important messages emerged. After the Green Revolution, which we have been experiencing for 
more than five decades, uh, the drylands have been bypassed somehow. Uh, most of the achievements we got in irrigated area. And uh, the other aspect was that the first green revolution which we witnessed for food security. But now what we need is household nutrition security because more than 40% of our children below five years of age are malnourished. Therefore, when we look at now, there are concerns and that's also expressed by economic of it, like uh, uh, Green Revolution possibly had been an exploitative uh, approach, uh, utilizing more of natural resources and their degradation in turn took place. And also uh, it remained confined to irrigated areas with more uh, use of inputs uh, and which later on led to the factor productivity decline. Uh, in the process also, greater emphasis than uh, by the society was on rice, wheat, and maize as food crop. And uh, uh, the, the preference for diversification, which was earlier, uh, somehow got uh, minimized. And uh, uh, the, the casualty was uh, to grow more of these crops, more commercial crops like cotton, even soya bean and uh, rice, wheat, and uh, maize, so on, uh, leading to decline in the area of uh, sugar, sorghum, and millets, almost to an extent of 15 to 20 million hectare. Now, we have to see this that uh, despite all this, the area under rabi sorghum has remained uh, reasonably. Uh, constant in uh, Maharashtra and Karnataka and same way area in the most dry part of Rajasthan which is called A1 zone has also been reasonably stable over the decades which means these are the crops which found their niche in most rain-fed uh, environment and uh, that was possible uh, maybe because of the efforts made by Rao and then later on by private sector for greater spread of hybrid technology. Lately, for the last two years during COVID-19 pandemic, some important messages have uh, surfaced. And that is that uh, COVID has drawn global attention towards food, nutrition, and environmental security. We need to take care of our natural resources. We need to also make sure that the food is nutritious and food is not only nutritious, but good for health and immunity. At the same time, it has been recognized that more than 150 million people have gone below poverty line and food may possibly be a, a major challenge in future to be met to many countries because of uh, uh, lack of its availability or lack of its uh, uh, transportation to those countries where it is not produced. So emphasis came that it should be produced where it is needed. And emphasis also came on local food systems. And uh, UN Food uh, System Summit is now being convened in November, which is going to have a decade of action plan for safe, accessible, sustainable, and equitable food systems. Therefore, now the nutritional aspect has come up front. Now for SDGs, also for zero hunger, we need to make sure that uh, there is uh, enough of good nutrition available for our people and there is no protein malnourishment. Why millets are called nutri-grains? They were called as coarse grains before, but uh, eventually the realization has come over the years that uh, we were mistaken by calling them coarse grain. Uh, they have all the nutritional qualities, high fiber, gluten, fat, cholesterol, and uh, anti-diabetic uh, phytochemicals, vitamins, minerals, and, and so on. So when we compare them with uh, the 
so called glamorous food of rice wheat and meat uh, there is no way less and rather in many uh, aspects they are much better and uh, being uh, used now more than what they used to be used before because i come from bajra growing region of rajasthan and uh, people had moved to eating wheat and rice but now eventually they are shifting back to use of pamelet uh, in their food so as i mentioned before we need a second green revolution we need a second green revolution to address those issues which first green revolution could not that means to provide nutrition security and to make gray areas green which means take care of the dry lands which are still around 48% and this is possible through a twin pillar approach approach around genetic enhancement and approach around uh, natural resource management in in that context we would like to now go in scaling hybrid technology uh, use of uh, i would call it genome genome research etc or for that matter conservation agriculture in dryland areas globally conservation agriculture has succeeded whether in latin america usa canada australia uh, turkey and other parts of the world in the dryland area but in india again conservation agriculture somehow remain confined to irrigated system of rice wheat in indo gangetic plains so we need to really look at the opportunity the options are fresh looking at a global scenario when we look at, we find that uh, africa and asia are the uh, niche for millets uh, uh, particularly and in asia india uh, has 80% of the production of uh, different millets whereas uh, uh, we contribute about 20% of the global scenario and average productivity thanks to the research and efforts of people like dr ng p rao and and others even dr uh, ds atwal coming out with first uh, pearl millet hybrid at the global level uh, to increase the productivity uh, which is comparable to that of the global average whereas this is not the case in africa uh, looking at uh, then the comparison with other countries in terms of uh, uh, we stand would see that we are first in pomelet and we are first in many others except we are sixth in sorghum so that shows that uh, again minor millets are also grown mostly in india and uh, around in uh, southeast asia from where china and southeast asia from the originated but uh, uh, they have been relegated uh, to a second or tertiary position and uh, uh, thanks to the efforts of our farmers our uh, leaders that uh, millets are still uh, being considered important in our daily diet let me cite an example dr borlog used to come frequently to visit uh, during the uh, Uh, late uh, green revolution period to see the scenario of uh, agriculture research and every time when he used to come we would organize his meeting with the prime minister so once uh, a meeting was organized with the uh, prime minister mr uh, uh, dev goda and uh, he said uh, uh, why not uh, you bring him for lunch so i took him uh, to his house pm house and we had lunch there and uh, we were served all other indian dishes but in his plate we found only uh, finger millet balls and uh, with curry and he was eating with hand so borlog was quite curious he said what are you eating uh, much different than what is being served to us he said this is food for poor people and this is the food which you can't eat you will have to eat it by hand you can't eat it by your spoon so 
that the kind of you know pride people had uh, for having the, the consumption of uh, finger millet or what we call ragi and so on. Uh, when we look at the area, uh, area wise, uh, millets are occupying about 58%. Gulam has related it was one earlier to second position around 38%, and finger millet 7.8%, and rest are very minor in their importance. So we have to think of these three crops to uh, give a high priority. Uh, no doubt all would require attention. And sometimes it is also argued that some of these uh, minor millets may possibly be ex extinct if not taken care of. So that is another part which has to be looked into. In the process, as I told you, decreased by almost 20 million hectares. Since, uh, you know, 1950, if you compare uh, to, to today's time, uh, but what has happened in the process that productivity is still increased by two and a half times, which means thanks to research, thanks to genetic enhancement and work of uh, our breeders and geneticists and now biochemists that uh, we have been able to uh, spare the land for other crops without compromising on production and productivity of uh, the uh, millets. So area decline has been compensated by productivity gain. And we see that this is possible or this could be possible because of uh, the uh, use of hybrid seed to a greater extent. And one point was to organize, uh, we used to be told before, whether it is in case of maize or in sorghum, that for Indian farmers, varieties are the best option. But I think uh, we were mistaken. And then we started with single cross maize hybrids uh, in 1987, 88, when I was deputy director general crop uh, as a special uh, hybrid program. Uh, we came out with hybrid rice, we came out with single cross maize hybrid by 2000. And in one decade time, in maize, we could double our maize production just by hybrid technology. And private sector also came in, earlier not interested. But then when we saw that they need intellectual property, so we brought in uh, farmers, uh, uh, breeders' right and farmers' right act, what we call is uh, EVPFRA. And uh, under that now, what we see is a great, uh, you know, coverage of area, mainly in millets by the private sector, as you see, hardly 10% is under HHB 67. This HHB 67 was also a hybrid that was released when I was chairing the variety release committee. Uh, it was in fact uh, uh, recommended to be rejected by the uh, expert panel on one ground that it had high downy mildew incidence in the apophytic conditions at Patancheru. I still recollect that. But then I said in the uh, dryland area where it is grown, that kind of incidence in downy mildew has never been noticed. So we took a question of raising it uh, mainly for Rajasthan, uh, rather northwestern uh, belt and uh, for last almost 25 years, I would say it is the 30 years, the, the variety or the hybrid is still predominant and uh, could not be replaced by any other early hybrid than what we have in HHB 67. Similarly, when you look at the grain sorghum side, again, I would say because of the strong public seed sector which got built, Due to availability of the hybrids from public sector through efforts of Dr. NGP Rao, that you still have about 40 to 45 percent area covered. Uh, no doubt, all uh, international and national seed companies are uh, working hard to see that their hybrids get more coverage 
but they have not yet been able to. So what you need is a strong hybrid seed production program, both in the public and private sector. And also you have to see that research is utilized further, uh, both in the public institution and the privatization. Now, when we look at, we, we started in that special hybrid program to come out with hybrids for Rabi uh, sorghum, because in Rabi, none could earlier replace Maldandi uh, variety, which is uh, predominantly grown and popular because of its drought hardiness, like uh, C305, uh, 306 in case of wheat. Similarly, in case of uh, Rabi uh, sorghum, it is Maldandi 35-1. And unfortunately, both are poor combiners but have again the uh, cytoplasm where you have male sterility. How did try to also exploit and later Dr. Vidya Bhushnam and uh, Rana uh, did the uh, cytoplasm of Maldandi as well, but uh, mainly we have been depending earlier on myeloma. So the hybrids were released like 13R and 39R is there. They seem to be high yielding, but still area coverage is very, very negligible because the preference for the Rabi Sorghum uh, is only for Maldani. This is a challenge which has to be accepted for future research. When we look at the coverage of hybrids, the seed sector needs to play a major role to see that more area is covered under hybrids. Hybrids do have resilience. When we came out with the one uh, review book along with Dr. V. L. Chopra uh, on the uh, breeding for drought tolerance, it, it was evident that hybrids were performing much better under rain-fed conditions and had better resilience. And that's what perhaps is the reason, whether it is cotton, sorghum, sunflower, uh, even uh, crops like palmillet, uh, they have been all under rain-fed conditions. Even mage had been under mostly rain-fed conditions before. So uh, other point is that uh, with regard to seed, something has to be uh, taken as a policy decision to stop this tender business for procuring hybrid seed in the states of particularly Haryana and Rajasthan which is very unfortunate and uh, uh, must be discouraged as a, as a policy intervention. And we need to build a strong public-private partnership and maybe come out with uh, some innovative uh, ways of uh, this partnership, like exclusive licensing and access and benefit sharing in which win-win is for both public and private institutions. Having talked all about these, now, what is the way forward? For way forward, I always believe that you must think globally, but you have to act locally. If you don't act locally, there's no point of thinking globally. But uh, to act locally, you must have best possible uh, knowledge uh, on which you can then rely to move forward and decide your future roadmap. In that context, there are action points. Uh, we have to increase production productivity. Nutrition, I have talked. We have to now go in for value addition to link farmers to market if we have to succeed with millets in future. We have to therefore bring entrepreneurship among youth, youth including women, and have start up a farmer producer organization. And we have to Think of new ways of building, laying intellectual property and, and sale and marketing for higher income. And definitely, like in Green Revolution, we capitalize the uh, partnership with Simit and Eri for dwarf wheats and rices, which were miracle seeds. Uh, we have to also have similar partnership strengthened. There is a partnership, but I think the time has come. I will talk to talk about it uh, in my uh, last part, that institutions like ICRISAT or advanced research institutions abroad 
where there are uh, opportunities of to uh, new materials and new knowledge and the policy support for msp is there but it has to be linked to procurement uh, as it is in case of wheat and rice uh, if we have to succeed uh, and make uh, future success of millets and there have to be incentive for environmental services so action is needed on greater use of genetic resources uh, improving productivity and nutritional quality higher coverage under hybrids i think uh, still even in case of sorghum and uh, palm millet uh, you go to uh, even the desert part of badmer or jaisalmer or jodhpur farmer would say i i need only uh, theli shankar jati ki bajre ki theli mujhe chahiye which means only i need the seeds of hybrids of palm millet not the variety which we have been otherwise propagating and advocating to them emphasis on conservation agriculture i have talked and promotion uh, with regard to value chain okay. now coming to germ plant we have to have a serious look we have the best collections in india Uh, in terms of what uh, we could have in terms of its availability and variability uh, it is around 58000 uh, now in our national gene bank uh, and when you look at the ecrisat gene bank we have 77000 which means about 20000 more than what we have in our national gene bank but how many are duplicates in them how many are uh, new ones from different sources and which one are good for which state and therefore joint evaluation uh, cataloging and uh, documentation becomes very important this part we had initiated one time uh, with the cresat uh, multi locations and probably time is right that uh, nbpgr uh, the national millet institute coordinated programs and uh, cresat come together and use the locations at various state agricultural universities and evaluate these traits for not uh, normal traits but very specific traits which make difference whether biotic abiotic stresses or for nutritional quality improvement at respect you look at pgr website there is app for all crops and for all minutes different minutes what have been covered from which area and which areas have yet not been explored so maybe it would be need still to have a look whether we need uh, to to collect more or whether all we have been covered and uh, what we can get from outside and what we can give to the rest of the uh, they, they, they say that you know uh, the revolution in digital technology made global as one village uh, earlier we had genetic resources for uh, free exchange and they were considered uh, common heritage of human being uh, no more that scenario exists and what can be done to have still a win win on both sides we have to look at through uh, the new material transfer agreement uh, which has been approved by the tt of fao and also by the uh, icr and ministry of agriculture we also need to see that uh, unique uh, germ plan lines are registered this registration was started in article and 25 years have gone this these figures i got from dr veena gupta and i i rather feel concerned that in 25 years only 100 dermplan unique lines have been registered it means breeders may be having many unique uh, materials with them but have not been encouraged to register them and uh, uh, put them in the public domain in terms of intellectual property for future we had first international agriculture congress organized in 1996 came out with delhi declaration 
uh, on agro biodiversity management and uh, the, the message was very clear that we need greater emphasis not only conserving the genetic resources as a black box but using them for the sustainable development and in that respect uh, it was also emphasized that we need to use more of wild relatives and uh, uh, land races uh, in our genetic program and we have to accelerate also our plant breeding program <coughs> fao had come out recently uh, with a study stating that globally the yields on plant breeding have declined even in india if we look at critically and dr t r sharma may possibly have uh, a review of it that invariably use of gel plant has declined how can we accelerate it and use that gel plant which makes a difference in terms of improvement in quality or in improvement for their resilience to uh, climate uh, stresses in the breeding strategy also we have to look differently not depend on conventional breeding or pre breeding material on which our scientists have been depending uh, greatly in the past and rather it has led to complacency now with this uh, 1 cg as well as with the crisat there is constraint of uh, producing more pre breeding material because of lack of resources for core funding and uh, system seem to be also uh, become more reliant on international centers for their breeding program this has to be changed we have to also take advantage of uh, uh, research which is uh, offering lot of opportunities uh, to go for marker assisted selections and also take advantage of uh, genome editing through crispr cas uh technology for which the two women scientists recently got uh, nobel prize in chemistry which has offered great opportunities to take advantage of it when we look at again uh, thanks to the efforts of those breeders that our uh, genetic enhancement in different of had not become stable but it had been increasing uh, with a reasonably good pace uh, this uh, uh, paper in current science by yadav and others uh, clearly tells that in case of wheat rice uh, maize pearl millet uh, sorghum uh, the, the scenario had been quite positive uh, which shows that our breeding efforts have been making Uh, steady progress but uh, maybe uh, we need to bring in more aggressive approach to see that uh, uh, we are able to uh, make better effort uh, in those niche areas where still not much has been done like i said the region of rajasthan uh, which is having around 4 to 5 million hectare area uh, for pearl millet and uh, the rabi sorghum in maharashtra and karnataka which also has something like about 2 to 3 million hectare area and and that's the area which uh, still has been uh, bypassed by all initiative uh, which we had uh, been making over the last 4 5 decades no doubt there are uh, you know positive sides of uh, research uh, that through uh harvest uh, and bio fortified program uh, new hybrids and new materials are coming forward which are much better in their uh, iron zinc and uh, other uh, micronutrient contents and uh, there are many varieties which have been released uh, we also see that the need to add value and when we need to add value then we will have to also improve the quality of those products uh, that uh, would demand again uh, the faster growth and progress of uh, uh, food industry uh, using hybrid uh, varieties with high sabolina amylose uh, 
a myelopectin ratio we also have high protein digestibility low phytate uh, high starch high ethanol fermentation efficiency and uh, sky is the limit when you look at these uh, the, the kind of uh, uh, recipes that are available are uh, enormous and a uh, lot of kvk is now taking benefit of uh, millets millets also are being used uh, for uh, diversified uses even for uh, beer making and uh, uh, opportunities and these uh, millets are also good for their fodder value i think it is just because of that fodder value in the most driest part they are still being grown because if crop fails for seed at least farmers do get fodder for their animals on which they depend to a greater extent so we will have to think in uh, strategy for fodder production also a strategy for dual types i would rather prefer dual type approach so that seed production doesn't remain a casualty uh, which is uh, Uh, invariably a, a problem luckily private sector is coming forward with their new hybrids both for sorghum and uh, for pulled which are production but in the public system if that is a, uh, a problem currently so in my last part the partnership with ecrisat why it is because i said it also the success of uh, green revolution had been as dr borlo was to tell the and dr swaminathan also many times highlighted and today's teachers day we have to remember all these teachers dr ab joshi dr uh, br murthy dr hk jain dr ngp rao and uh, uh, many those stalwarts uh, who helped in producing the best uh, uh human resource from institutions like iri and later from uh, many important state agricultural universities so uh what what kind of partnership with ecrisat if we have to look for second green revolution around household uh, nutrition security then we have to look at the germ plan more seriously for improving its nutritional quality we have to for that create facility and work together in a joint initiative for phenotyping and accelerated prebreeding uh we need to also uh, target uh, our efforts on genomics genome editing and biofortification where what is needed and what more can be done and no doubt basic work on drought tolerance i mentioned before and biotech stresses the strengthening work on nutritic gene pool which very possibly has not been given that much required attention as it is and dr wal uh, has been all the time talking about it in case of mage that you have to lay greater emphasis on nutritic gene pools and diversify your uh you know a and b lines to to continue getting better uh, gains in future and our work on natural resource management the twin pillar which i said uh, around natural resource management and mainly around conservation agriculture so if we have to go in and uh, help farmer to give them technology to improve productivity uh, reduce cost on inputs and that reduced cost on input can be through conservation agriculture and uh, uh, also we have to see that uh, uh, farmers are able to uh, get linked to the farm market for better income in process partners helped in the past like uh, hhb 67 got improved over the years and uh, the first version was uh, really before uh that's why abh 67 is still holding its ground and uh, recently as uh, mentioned to me by dr rajiv washne 
HSB seven improved two has also been now uh, evolved, uh, which need to be uh, scaled in terms of its uh, more area coverage and uh, its utility in terms of important useful trades, which are all defined here. And we have to also have partnership so that we don't duplicate these facilities, but uh, take advantage of these facilities which have already been built, like the center of excellence in genomics. And uh, as, as you would see from the next slide, it has uh, such a big consortium approach and partnership. We need also consortium approach for our Indian institutions uh, to be linked either with them or to work with the CRISAT and it, uh, address those issues which are more relevant to our local condition. In that process, uh, we are happy that uh, genome sequences also have been almost uh, uh, worked out okay. for of the millets and others can also be taken care of where it is not done. We would require phenotyping facility. I am told it is still uh, not yet built or, or being used that uh, extensively uh, as is being done now for wheat at uh, Bo Borlog Institute for South Asia, uh, Ludhiana for wheat germplasm. So we need now phenotyping facility, uh, which is very important and uh, can accelerate the breeding process very fast. We have to use multi locations for advancing generations. Itself is a good location for that matter, but others as well to be explored and taken benefit of. And in the process, we have to also go in for uh, basic research relating to drought tolerance. This, this facility was built for not uh, the mandated crops of uh, uh, otherwise Icrisat, but for tomato through AVRDC and help of German government. I'm told this kind of facility uh, can be activated and used for uh, germ plants for those uh, uh, climate stresses which otherwise uh, are needing attention now. Similarly, we have to bridge the yield gap, yield gap for different crops by looking at different eco uh, region wise and uh, uh, assessing where there is potential and uh, where there is more area, but uh, uh, then what is lacking, which requires attention uh, in future. Finally, there are opportunities. Opportunities, India was uh, uh, rather, I would say, uh, first nation to uh, declare the national year of millets in 2018. Now, based on the recommendation of Indian government, uh, UN has uh, agreed to declare uh, International Year of Millets in 2023, which means we have time of about two years to demonstrate our uh, research capability and leadership at a global level. National Mission on Millet was also started around nutri cereals. So we are already calling them nutri cereals, no more core cereals, and they are crops for the future. And uh, it was initiated in 2018. Uh, resources can further be uh, added to it and uh, more centers could have partnership in this mission program. No, no. Maybe no. there is need for relooking at it. And uh, all said and done, there is MSP uh, for Sorghum, for Maldandi there is separate MSP. Though not much, it should be uh, much higher as it is for basmati and uh, for rice otherwise. But uh, for bajra also there is MSP. And when you compare it with wheat and uh, uh, paddy and even mage, the, the MSP for these crops is relatively much higher. But it's not right. And farmer don't get, even on my farm, I had uh, pearl millet which I could not sell at the MSP of 2,150 uh, last year. I had to sell it at 1,900 rupees per quintal. So there is need for procurement. And then also there is need for awareness 
awareness like what we could get awareness for quinoa quinoa nobody knew before though we have been growing it in india uh, to a greater extent and uh, uh, taking full benefit of it in our uh, food as well but uh, it has now become a craze uh, public awareness so we did a public awareness initiative and hopefully initial uh, this uh, international year of millets and the covid 19 and the earlier effort of national year of millet will uh, make a difference so india i consider is truly a happening place for millets in future so what we need is policy support msp to be linked to procurement by states not only center states where they are grown because these are major important crop for the farmers of their own state inclusion of millets in midday meal Uh, including millets in public distribution system, and also maybe in the National Food Security uh, Act, where we are distributing rice, wheat, and maize at uh, three, two, and one rupee per kilo. Uh, millets also included, and premium needed on biofortified varieties, and incentives to be given to farmer producer organization in millet growing districts, and maybe for value addition there should be exemption for gst uh, so that there is encouragement to the young entrepreneurs the future strategy would require more allocation of resources we have been telling even for icr resources should be doubled certainly for millets not if not tripled must be doubled the, the uh, i have probably argued and made a case for it Uh, a consortium on hybrid millet has to be initiated to uh, plug those all gaps which are otherwise existing and see that there is a strong public private partnership uh, right from the beginning uh, to to consider them on same platform and uh, there is opportunity through ecrisat and uh, through national effort to promote south south collaboration between india and africa and uh, naturally uh, we have to care, take care of our genetic resources as i said before we must apply gi for modern day why we should not i i i i feel to understand this and uh, finally we would need a road map on millets for uh, at least 2030 to match with the goals of sustainable development so that whether millets can also play a role to uh, help the day 2030 so to make i have my dream gray area green only millets can do it and finally millets can lead to second green revolution for better health and prosperity of our Uh, small holder farmers who are uh, majority about 80% of them and uh, awaiting support from uh, the national agriculture research system and international organizations thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much it was a wonderful uh, thought process how to take forward the millets so we are all benefited sir 300 plus people today listen to your uh, uh, first ngp raw memorial lecture and uh, definitely sir as you have advised the strategy we will put in place and uh, take forward the policies around so that the millet promotion could happen the way it has been desired so thank you very much for your uh, wonderful lecture sir and we are all highly benefited thank you so much sir thank you bani vm garshan do ye hazira uh now sir uh, take it with the permission of chair uh, we would like to take forward uh, the program uh, to the ultimate uh, <clears throat> point of today's uh, program is uh, recognizing the contributions of people who worked for the last 40 years in sorghum small millet sand pearl millet so it is the lifetime achievement award uh, 
or Dr. in the name of Dr. N. G. P. Rao. So, Dr. N. G. P. Rao Memorial Lifetime Achievement Award has been given in this initial year for to three people for their human contribution in the area of sorghum to Dr. Bhavar Singh Rana, earlier uh, director, project coordinator of sorghum. Uh, then, in small minutes, to Dr. A. Sitaram who was the project coordinator and also the coordinator of the national food mission earlier, and uh, Pearl Millet to Dr. Kedar Nath Rai. So now uh, I would like to request uh, the, uh, Dr. Aruna to read about uh, Dr. Bhavar Singh Rana and his contribution. Uh, then we will have the recognitions. Okay, sir, thank you. Very good morning to all of you. I feel privileged to present the citation of Dr. B.S. Rana. Dr. Banwar Singh Rana was born in Navi Nagar, Muzaffar Nagar of UP on 5th July, 1941. Dr. Rana is a reward plant breeder with outstanding contributions in novel breeding concepts and developing a number of sorghum hybrids and varieties which doubled the sorghum productivity during 1990s. He completed his MSc Agriculture in 1963 and PhD in 1972 from Agra University. His specialization in biometrics, quantitative genetics, multivariate analysis, pharma participatory research, energy crops development, and computer programming greatly benefited the sorghum researchers. He also evaluated world sorghum germplasm collection and developed seed catalog of more than 8,000 entries uh, before joining Sorghum Project in 1970. Later, he worked as head IRA Regional Research Station, Hyderabad, during 1984 to 87. He also contributed as plan reader in FAO under UNDP program in Kenya during 1981 to 82. He had opportunities to serve internationally as FAO consultant, plan reading, and seed production specialist in Myanmar, and also as IFAD Consultant Agriculture and Principal Investigator of ACIAR and DFID projects. He developed a number of concepts, explored genetics, and developed selection criteria for sorghum improvement. To maximize yield, he optimized the plant type, type of process and hybrids, impact of male and female parents on hybrid yield, type of uh, mating systems and their recombination patterns in segregating generation, yield prediction models, co-heritability and genetic advance, enhancing heterosis levels, and genetics of adaptability and stability. He used high gene interaction to develop tall dual purpose hybrid like CSH13. He has contributed to the genetics of protein quality, genetics of fertility restoration, and utilization of A2 cytoplasm. His pioneering research work in sorghum is published in 150 papers in national and international journals during his 33 years of research career in sorghum in ICAR. His efforts in designing production systems, enhancing host plant resistance and alternate uses make him the most distinguished sorghum scientist in India. He guided nine students for MSc and seven for PhD. He was instrumental in establishing sorghum breeding and agronomic research at Busia of Western Kenya, Center for Rabi Sorghum at Sholapur, Off-Season Facility at Warangal, Multi-Crop R&D in a private sector company, and Crop Science Center for Energy Crops at NFCI Hyderabad. He is recipient of prestigious ICAR Vasantarao Naik National Award for the year 1995, in recognition of his outstanding contributions to improve the productivity of dry land agriculture. He is also the elected fellow of the National Academy of Agricultural Sciences, New Delhi. Recognizing his human contribution in improving food and nutrition security in dry lands through sorghum improvement, the Society for Millets Research, ICAR, Indian Institute of Millets Research, Rajendra Nagar, Hyderabad, takes pride in awarding Dr. N.G.P. Rao Memorial Lifetime Achievement Award to Dr. Banwar Singh Rana on this day of 5th September 2021. Hearty congratulations, sir. 
on this achievement. Thank you, Dr. Aruna. So congratulations to Bhavar Singh Rana, sir, on behalf of everybody on this platform. Uh, now we will go to a citation of Dr. A. Sitaram uh, by uh, Dr. Visharada. Thank you, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is really a great honor to present the credentials of Dr. A. Sitaram. Dr. Anada Sitaram, born on 3rd June 1943 in Haraholi, Kanakpura, Bengaluru, Karnataka. He obtained his bachelor's degree in 1963 from Agricultural College, Bangalore. Master's degree from in Agricultural Botany from College of Agriculture, Dharwad in 1965. And he obtained his PhD from IIR in New Delhi in 1968. He has served at UAS Bangalore from 1970 to 79 and later in ICR from 1979 to 2003 as associate coordinator, minor millets, and as project coordinator, small millets, and emeritus scientist of ICR from 2003 to 2005. He has made notable contributions as plant breeder in the crop improvement of small millets and sunflower. He was intimately associated for more than two decades in small millet research and development in the country. A number of improved varieties in various small millets were released under his leadership, benefiting large rural, tribal, and hill farming communities, which were left out of green revolution technology. His outstanding contribution was on assembling one of the largest collection of six small millet germ plasm, exceeding 11,000 accessions, for which he was the curator. <laughs> Especially the elect genetic, uh, genetic stocks all over the country, thus contributing to the conservation and improvement of India's old and native crop plants for considerable nutrition value that are of great relevance to the disadvantaged society. He is well known for his contribution in hybrid research in sunflower in the country and released the first hybrid sunflower BSH1 and the most popular open pollinated variety, modern, in the national level. He has guided 22 PhD and 20 MSc students. He has authored several 15 books, monographs, and published more than 250 research papers in leading research journals. His contributions to the field of crop improvement and agriculture were recognized by conferring R.D. Asna Endowment Award by the ICR for outstanding research in plant breeding for Triennium 1977 to 78. Om Prakash Bhasin Foundation Research Award in 1998, Distinguished Alumni Award UAS 2003, Dr. Harbhajan Singh Memorial Lifetime Achievement Award ISPGR New Delhi 2005 to 2006. He served as Chairman of International Small Millet Steering Committee from 1986 to 1993, and leader of technology mission of government of India on food and nutritional security in tribal and hilly areas of the country from 1998 to 2003. He is the elected fellow of National Academy of Agricultural Sciences, New Delhi, honorary fellow, Indian Society of All Seeds Research, Hyderabad, fellow, Indian Society of Genetics and Plant Breeding, New Delhi and fellow Indian Society of Plant Genetic Resources, New Delhi. Recognizing his human contributions in improving food and nutritional security across dry lands through small millets improvement, the Society for Millets Research, ICR, Indian Institute of Millets Research, Rajendranagar, Hyderabad, take pride in awarding Dr. N.G.P. Rao Memorial Lifetime Achievement Award to Dr. Annada Sitaram on this day of 5th September 2021. Hearty congratulations to you, sir. The nation boasts you for his achievements. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Visharda. So congratulations, Sitaram, sir, on behalf of Society for Millet Research, NGP Rao Foundation, ICR, and also Advanta, who have instituted this award together. So uh, now I would like to uh, request uh, uh, Jinu Jacob to kindly read the citation of uh, Dr. Kedarnath Rai for 
the award in a permalet improvement. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my privilege to be reciting the citation for Dr. K. N. Rai. Dr. Kedar Nadrai, born on 1st June 1946, is a former group leader of permalet improvement in the dryland cereals program at Ikrisat, Patanchiru, India. He received his master's degree in genetics from the Indian Agricultural Research Institute, New Delhi, and PhD degree in genetics from the University of California at Davis, USA. After a brief period as a rice breeder at Benares Hindu University, Varanasi, he joined Ikrisat as a permalet breeder in 1977. Until his superannuation, he contributed immensely for permalet improvement research at Ikrisat. During this long innings of about 36 years in permalet improvement research, Dr. Rai has made tremendous contributions for improving permalet productivity in India and also contributed for better understanding of the genetics, adaptation, and nutritional features of this crop and its implications in genetic improvement. More than 60 permalet hybrids marketed in India at any given time are based on the female parents developed by him or included as parentage of improved breeding lines of others, which had been shared with all hybrid breeding programs in India and worldwide. He has developed and disseminated more than 125 male sterile lines and published more than 180 research articles and bulletins, including a classic book on pearl millet breeding that he co-edited with other experienced millet breeders from India and the USA. He has been instrumental in developing a very strong partnership with ICAR All India Coordinated Pearl Millet Improvement Project and with private sector through Pearl Millet Hybrid Parents Research Consortium. More recently, he developed and strengthened crop biofortification research activities of Harvest Plus, ICAR, and DBT. His biofortification research efforts have led to a much better understanding of genetics, variability, and hybrid development strategy with respect to high iron pearl millet. As a result, a high iron variety, Thana Shakti, was released in 2013, marking it, as, marking it the first biofortified crop cultivar in public domain released in India. He supervised the dissertation research of two master students and five PhD students, of which two of them were recognized with the Jawaharlal Nehru Award of the ICAR for best PhD thesis in plant breeding. For all the above efforts and contributions, Dr. Rai has been recognized with various individual and team awards and honors nationally and internationally. The most significant among these include CGIAR Chairman's Excellence in Science Award, CGIAR's King Badawin Award, Doreen Margaret Marshaller Award, Jenna Reddy Wengat Reddy Prize, Seed Association of India Award, and Chaudhary Devi Lal Outstanding AICRP Award of the ICAR. Recognizing these EOMAN contributions in improving food and nutritional security across dry lands through pearl millet improvement, the Society for Millet Research, ICAR, Indian Institute of Millet Research, Rajendranagar, Hyderabad, takes pride in awarding Dr. NGP Rao Memorial Lifetime Achievement Award to Dr. Kedar Nath Rai on this day of 5th September 2021. Hearty congratulations, sir. So thank you, <clears throat> Jino. And congratulations, Kedar Nath Rai, sir, for this wonderful uh, uh, contribution in Pearl Millet Improvement. We all take pride in recognizing your contributions. So thank you very much, sir. And to the information of all, uh, uh, we have uh, already uh, uh, means uh, reached the citation and also one lakh rupees cash prize to everyone uh, to th three of them to uh, them personally and uh, we have also recorded their uh, acceptance speeches and uh, we will play them first and then if they want to add anything more uh, they, they, they can add so uh, dr ilangavan Thank you. 
Honorable Panbhushan Dr. Rajendra Singh Paroda, the visionary leader of agriculture sciences, Dr. Thuji Ikrisat, Director General, and Dr. Tia Shamaji, ICR DDG, Dr. Tanampiji, and distinguished participants. I express my gratitude to Dr. NGP Rao Foundation, to Dr. NGP Rao himself, and magnanimity of his family to institute this prestige award. I also thank you the selection committee, his chairman and the members, and Dr. Tanopiji himself to nominate my name for this award. I am grateful to the Dr. NGP Rao leadership and give me the opportunity to work under his guidance for 10 years. This created the very vast history in the sorghum science and development of I hybrids and varieties. This was the first impact of the things, but later on when the responsibility came to me to lead the national program, they also created another history. They have developed the hybrid and variety with very high defensive system, which could not fail and have increased and doubled the production of the sorghum in the country. The production was so large that the country could not absorb it, and that's why my colleague oriented their research to alternate use to more scientific manners, advanced technology, and resistant to the insect and pest. They have made this project and the country proud that the national program at that time was the best program in the developing world and it could not be taken over international program and multinational company. I thank you, my colleagues. I'm grateful to Dr. Parodaji, particularly because under his blessing, we have enhanced the capacity of the scientists, institute infrastructure, and the laboratories to take this advanced work. I thank you, each and everyone. Thank you very much. Jaya Hind. Thank you. Yeah, Dr. Ilangon. Sir, the one minute, sir.
I present thanks to Dr. Vilas Panthi, Director IAMR, and Dr. Rajendra Prasad, and the Vice Chancellor of the US Bangalore, and to all merit scientists, well wishers, and friends for being with me all through my academic and scientific career. Jai Hind. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Yeah, Dr. Ilango. It is a matter of great honor that the Minister Society of India and the Selection Committee uh, found me worthy of Dr. Gandhi Pildao Memorial Lifetime Achievement Award. This award is a recognition of the research that I did by Dickerson. Throughout my career of 39 years, 39 years looked very long time to me. But it was very short time in a way for me. And the reason is that the, throughout my uh, work at Dickerson, we always used to set the target very hard. I was very fortunate on three counts. One, that I had a very strong and dedicated team of scientists, colleagues, and support staff. Two, at least it provided me an excellent platform. And three, it, the institution allowed me uh, allowed me or gave me free hands to do whatever I wanted to do, I mean, whatever way I wanted. Uh, I must say that uh, uh, in the life of everybody, every scientist, there are people who come and they influence the way uh, uh, things should be done. Uh, there could be several, but I would like to name only three. The first and the foremost is DJ and Jules, who was my first leader of the Burden Day program, with whom I worked for about eight years. And from him, I really learned the nuts and bolts of applied plant breeding, uh, especially for millet. The second is that in my early days, I had to decide, I came in contact with Dr. Lenji Pirao. And in one of the conversations, he said, Dr. Rai, for leaders, the product development is the first priority. But one has to remember that if you want to make long term genetic gain, a good amount of strategic research has to be done. And once I heard this one from him, I talked to the people in Sartham. And what I heard about him was that he was one of the few scientists in India, maybe the only scientist actually, who had excellent balance of strategic research and product development. So product and publication, product development and publication, uh, balance was the hallmark of Dr. Randy Pirao, and that became a mantra for me actually. Ten years later after that, I went on a sabbatical at the Tipton Georgia in the USA to work in a team led by Dr. Glenn Burton. Dr. Glenn Burton is basically the father of Parliament. In one of the conversations, he told me, Dr. R, I know that the has a lot of emphasis on OPP development. 
But then we know that the hybrids have 30 to 50 percent advantage over the open pollinated variety. Why so much mutasis are no PV? And I have to tell him that uh, it depends on the leadership. But what I you said, I agree fully with you. And if the opportunity comes, I think that it will happen. In the second half of my TV, that opportunity came, and I transformed the entire program from the OPV development to the hybrid development. And I am very proud of it, although there were a lot of challenges in the there were some technical things also I did. But this was to be done because that was my conviction. The second one was that uh, we knew that the said alone of course cannot achieve one. We are we were we were very good and we are still very good in the is still very good in developing the improved breeding lines and the parental lines of the hybrid. But these had to be channelized that really in a product that farmers grow, that means the hybrid sector. And for that we needed very strong partners, which we developed in the national program. But particularly with the private seed companies for hybrid balance research consortium. So these are the two things actually that I cherish actually. And I am very happy. I am very happy that after the retirement, I left a very strong program in very technical hands. Yeah. So thank you, Dr. Ilangon, and uh, congratulations to all the Lifetime Achievement Award is Dr. Bhavan Singh Rana Ji, Dr. A. Sitaram Ji, and Kedar Nath Rai Ji. On behalf of Society for Millets Research, and also uh, the NGP Rao Foundation, and Advanta, and Indian Institute of Millets Research, in the presence of Dr. Raj Singh Paroda Ji, Dr. Uh, Jacqueline Hughes, Dr. T. R. Sharma Ji, and host of uh, senior uh, teachers, scientists, and the industry people, we really uh, thank you very much for all the contributions and thank you very much, sir. So uh, now we will go to the remarks by guests of honor. Uh, may I request Dr. Bhupen Dubey, CEO Advanta. He had, convert, uh, he had confirmed the uh, participation. Uh, Dr. Bhupen. Yeah, I think he is not there. He had to join from Dubai. He is not there probably. Because he had he told me, called me yesterday that he would be there. He's not there, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, so we thank uh, Advanta for uh, contributing to the corpus to take forward the lifetime achievement recognitions uh, in the years to come. Uh, Dr. Rajendra Prasad. Vice Chancellor, U.S. Bangalore, he acted as the chairman of uh, the nomination committee for this award. Uh, sir, also not there, I think. Okay. So, thank you, sir, and the committee members also. Uh, Dr. Arvind Kumar, uh, DDG Ikrisat. Sir is there, sir. Uh, Arvind Kumar. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, uh, good morning to all of you and a warm wishes on the eve of the Teachers' Day to all of us, to each one of us. All of us have some teachers who have taught us by which we have reached there, here. Uh, respected uh, Padma Bhushan, Dr. Raj Parodaji, uh, secretary, former secretary there and Director General ICR, uh, Dr. Jacqueline Hughes, Director General Ikriset, Mrs. NGP Rao and family, and uh, the three awardees, Dr. Bhanur Singh Rana, Dr. Anand Sitaram, Dr. Kedar Nath Rai, and officials from the ICR, different centers, and different institutions. Last but not least, my friend, Dr. T.R. Sarma, DDG ICR. First of all, Heartiest congratulations to the three awardees for their contribution, Dr. Bhanavar Singh Rana, Dr. Anand Sitaram, Dr. Kedarnath Rai, and thank you, thanks to them for all their contribution for the improvement of the millets. We really feel proud of the contributions that they have 
provided to the military search and which we have responsibility to take it forward. Now coming to the wonderful lecture today that I heard from Padm Bhushan, Dr. Raj Singh Paloda. For me, this was like a roadmap that what uh, we should be doing. A well thought of what our contributions have been in the past and where we should be moving up to 2030. Thank you, Dr. Paloda, for the wonderful lecture and showing us a roadmap. Now, I took uh, some lessons from two of his slides, which I want to bring here very quickly. While we all feel proud of what we have achieved over years in the military search, and rightly so, which is demonstrated today also by honoring the contribution of the stalwarts in the military search. But I think uh, we still have a long way to go. We still have a long way to go to work a lot to ensure that Millet has its place in the food system that it really deserves. And how we can do it, probably we have to work a lot towards the processing, towards the value development, towards understanding the, 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 the bioavailability, the market linkages, linkages between farmers and industries, policy and price support and procurement, utilizing traits that could have high importance. We do see some problems that millets probably we need, as millet researcher, we need to, to sort very quickly. And I would mention at least one, which uh, haunts me is the rancidity in the palmillet flow, floor. How quickly we can do it. And there are other many traits which are very important, which we all know that these millets have, including the calcium, high calcium in the finger millet how we can bring sustainable balance between demand and supply. It fluctuates year over year. And also as Dr. Paroda mentioned, higher income, entrepreneurship, and the starts up, procurement, storage, supply of millets under the public distribution system. And also to ensure that, you know, evidently how millet become part of the food of the larger population. I don't think that this can become just by keeping, uh, keeping the millets in the, in the malls and the shops. It has to go into the heart of each of the consumer that this is needed. So while we celebrated today, the, the success of the research, we have a long way to go. And together, probably on this teacher's day, we should pledge once more that we will not leave unless we reach where we, we have to reach. Last but not least, I really appreciate the effort that IIMR has taken forward. Uh, also as a society for honoring the people who have contributed to the military research. And on personal level, thanks to Dr. Tonapi uh, for inviting me to attend this function. And once again, heartiest congratulations to three awardees. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Arvind Kumar. Thank you so much for your presence and your comments, sir. And now I would like to request Dr. N. H. Rao, son of Dr. N. G. P. Rao, and uh, on behalf of the N. G. P. Rao Foundation and as a trustee, uh, I would like to request him for his remarks. Dr. N. H. Rao. Yes. You can hear me now? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, you are muted. You are, you are muted, sir. Unmute. Yeah. You can hear me now, please? Yes, yes. Yeah. Respected chairperson, Dr. Jacqueline Hughes, co chair, Dr. T.R. Sharma, honorable chief guest, Dr. R.S. Paroda. Director IIMR, Dr. Vilas Tonopi, scientists of IIMR, and all colleagues, friends, family members who are a part of this ceremony. First of all, I uh, express my thanks on behalf of the NGP Rao Foundation to Dr. Arish Paroda for so graciously accepting the invitation to 
to give the inaugural lecture today. I also congratulate the three award winners, Dr. B.S. Rana, Dr. K.N. Rai, and Dr. A. Sitarama. And thank them for so graciously accepting the awards. Next, on behalf of my mother, Srimati Neelam Raju Kamala, all members of our family, and the Dr. N.G.P. Rao Foundation, I wish to thank IIMR and the Society of Millet Research for taking the initiative to honor the memory of my father, late Dr. N.G.P. Rao, the father of hybrid sorghum, which heralded the Green Revolution in rain-fed dryland regions of India. In honoring his memory, we also recall, honor, and pay our tributes to the untiring efforts of scientists and colleagues of the eventful years of 60s and 70s at the All India Coordinated Sorghum Improvement Project, IRI, and the rest of the country. The millions of farmers, the seed industry, which was jump started actually by the sorghum hybrids, the leadership at ICR, and the personal interest and initiative of state political leaderships and civic administration of the time in the rain-fed drylands, which made the rain-fed land green revolution possible. 50 years down the line, both perceptions and scientific understanding about sorghum and millets have changed. From being the dominant staple of rain-fed drylands in the 60s and 70s, later to low preferred crops as their areas declined rapidly with shift in food habits, and now, to the last decade or so, when they have come to be seen as smart crops for sustaining the planet and smart foods for keeping the human population healthy. Smart crops in the sense of being climate smart, water smart, energy smart, nutrient smart, and for their role in conserving biodiversity. And also as smart foods, for human health and nutrition by virtue of their nutritive qualities. So given this recent push because of this smart crop identification of the sorghum and millets, as can be expected, this recent push has given a huge simmering potential and opportunity for innovation in multiple dimensions in sorghum and millets. We are already seeing a lot of activity to exploit this potential across a wide range of institutions, which include the public research institutions, the corporate sector, in FMCG, as well as in the big tech now, and increasingly in the plethora of agri-tech and food tech startups. And slowly, policy is also beginning to recognize this change, and needed changes may soon come about. My father, Dr. N.J.P. Rao, was in many ways ahead of his times. When he, right from the early years of the Sorghum project, visualized and advocated the multidimensional benefits of sorghum and millets and their indispensable role in sustaining the rural livelihoods in rain-fed dialects. He strived to design the research programs of the Sorghum project in those days in line with this vision. The NGP Rao Foundation has compiled a collection of his research papers on sorghum into an e-book, which uniquely captures the timeline of working towards the realization of this vision. The foundation would like to carry forward this legacy and will be privileged to contribute and add to the recent momentum in research and innovation towards realizing the potential of sorghum and millets. I once again thank Dr. Tonapi for this initiative, congratulate the award winners, and very graciously thank Padma Shri Dr. R.S. Paroda for inaugurating and giving this inaugural first memorial lecture. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Nichiro, sir. Uh, we will take forward thank this you, uh, momentum and also the plan, the things in the future. So thank you very much. And uh, before we come to the last uh, uh, portion of this uh, uh, particular program, uh, may I request uh, Raj Paroda, sir, we would like to add anything before I hand it over to Chairman and uh, Co-Chair, sir. Paroda, sir. Yeah, uh, well, uh, not much to say now, except that uh, I would like to join the organizers uh, in congratulating the award winners. And also would like to convey our best wishes to uh, Mrs. Rao, Dr. N. H. Rao, and all family members. Uh, for having joined today. Uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, we really feel proud that uh, in the name of Dr. NGP Rao, these initiatives have been taken. Uh, I'm sure this foundation would continue uh, doing much more in, in terms of reaching the end users in terms of benefits of new innovation in the area of uh, military research. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers uh, personally, uh, to you, Dr. Tonapi, for having uh, asked me to participate, uh, I considered it my privilege because in the name of Dr. N. G. P. Rao, anything that can be done is not enough. Uh, the, the way he contributed and my association with him all through till his retirement and later uh, had been very, very, uh, you know, intimate and uh, very close. Uh, rare, rarely you get such people. And uh, such, such in, uh, occasions do uh, give a kind of feeling among the youngsters that uh, much can be achieved and, and they can be uh, the, the torch bearers and uh, certainly the way that he mentored people uh, is amazing, very silent worker, very unassuming, uh, down to earth, uh, uh, very affectionate and would like to encourage his colleagues. Uh, these are rare qualities, which I hope uh, others would like to imbibe. And uh, personally, I am a beneficiary of all that. So, it had been a great pleasure participating and uh, uh, joining this event. Thank you very much. And thanks to Jackie Huge and also to Dr. T. R. Sharma and all other organizers uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, now I hand it over to Dr. Jacqueline Hughes and uh, T. R. Sharma, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start um, a co-chair, but let me start and then I'll hand over to my co-chair to wrap up. The remarks during this gathering have been so very illuminating and they clearly highlight the important role of Millets and Sorga moving to the International Year of Millets in 2023, particularly around food and nutrition security and ensuring smallholder farmers get a decent income and livelihoods under their adverse conditions. So as we were working towards the UN Food Systems Summit, I kept hearing forgotten crops. And these were the sorghum and millet and many more and cover the entire spectrum of food and industrial uses. But I kept telling the people in the various workshops that they might be forget, forgotten crops to some, but for others, they're their everyday business. And these crops to me make use of the local agricultural biodiversity to provide us with nutritious and sustainable diets. Dr. Paroda mentioned those. They also contribute to diversity and minimize risk in our cropping systems helping also to mitigate the problems of monoculture that we often see in those big three. So from the NGP Rao 
awards, the three awardees. Congratulations to Dr. Banwa Singh Rana, Dr. Anada Sitaram, and Dr. Kedar Nath Rai. It was truly well deserved, and I'm humbled by the amount of work that you've all put into developing these crops. I've also taken into account the comments of the guests of honor, Drs. Kumar and Dr. Rao, because it set the scene and helped point us in the right direction. Dr. Tonapi, thank you for letting me speak at this point, and thank you to IIMR for the, this wonderful opportunity. I did take a few notes, and forgive me because it's quite difficult to read. I was scribbling too much, but we heard from Dr. Paroda, amongst many other things, the importance of teamwork. We're honoring the breeders generally. And as Dr. Rai said just now, it's always part of a bigger team. And that leads to the success. And what came to my mind was the need for all of us to focus on these product profiles. Know what you're breeding for, whom you are breeding for, and then your experience will tell us how to do it. We were hearing about food security and the green revolution, so very important. Now, however, it's nutritional security that's driving us. We heard about biofortified crops from Dr. Paroda. I'd just like to add that we need to make sure that the biofortified components are bioavailable, whether to us, the humans, or to the animals. Uh, when we make sure that food is available, it has to be affordable. That's critical. Otherwise, we can have a glut and the people in need can't eat. I was glad that we touched on the environment and making gray areas green. That's definitely our focus. And when we talked about um, all those recipes and products that were on one of Dr. Paroda's slides, I could only think of IIMR as well as our own cafeteria, but IIMR has these products which are so on point. The decline in area versus productivity brought to my mind inputs, seed, and other inputs. Listening to Dr. Paroda, I also wanted to thank him for helping us as an international center focus on the needs of India and globally in different areas. And as I tried to summarize in my mind from an international perspective and headquartered in India, the global versus local, what important steps are necessary? Dr. Paroda was very um, bulleted, good points, which we've taken in, as Arvind Kumar has said, but from what I'm seeing is that we've got to take the discussion with IIMR ourselves and more broadly from the current supply side push to a demand pull. We need to increase yields or breed resistance for biotic and abiotic stresses. Absolutely critical, but it's not enough. Farmers, consumers and industry have to be factored in as well. And the research priorities of any national agricultural research system and our partners, industry players, research organizations, we've got to engage with the stakeholders to determine the future direction based on the guidance that we receive today. Private industry and government have to work together and invest in the value chain or value web for these cereals, because unlike rice, wheat and maize, the value chains for these crops is less developed, or I would even say underdeveloped in Africa. So this is where entrepreneurs and startups can have such an important role using technology to leapfrog the constraints that we see in the current chains. That way we'll get the sorghum and millets to be better than quinoa, more accepted, more wanted. 
and we've got to get our diets and food systems, which lie at the inter sort of the intersection of the challenges of malnutrition, human health, national natural resources, and climate change. The food systems are all embedded, and we need to look at all the different aspects if we're going to meet those sustainable development goals. And we heard policy, the policy push in the right direction for resilience, diversity, inclusivity, and nutrition. So my last statement, sorghum and millets, thanks to the directions in which Dr. NGP Rao pointed us and the awardees have pushed us, sorghum and millet can be the future-proof crops for resilient and healthy ecosystems, which the planet urgently needs. Dr. Tonapi, thank you for the opportunity and now passing on to my co-chair. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time and uh, guidance for this program. Sharma, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tonapi. Thank you, Jacqueline, for summarizing the very difficult talk of Dr. Paroda. Actually, it is always a treat to listen to Dr. Paroda. And today, again, we got that treat at this particular occasion. And the points which he had listed very nicely summarized by Dr. Jacqueline. And I think it's a message for both of us, or maybe all of us who are working in uh, Indian crop systems and particularly the millets and minor millets and pearl millets. Uh, Dr. Paroda has highlighted various gap areas which uh, need to be filled and also suggested various action points. Before I come to those action points and what we are doing here, I would like to place on a record uh, my sincere thanks to Dr. NGP Rao family, particularly Mrs. NGP Rao who could join today at this particular, at this particular and also uh, the awardee, three awardee, Dr. Banwar Singh Rana, Dr. Anand Sitaram, Dr. Kedar Nath Rai, hearty congratulations for this very important and distinguished honor which has been established by Dr. NGP Rao Foundation. And I think it will take the legacy of this great man further in the years to come. Uh, we, we listen a very enthusiastic and very uh, energetic lecture from Dr. Paroda, which was first in a series of Dr. NGP Rao Memorial uh, lecture series. And I think uh, the choice of Dr. Tonapi and the team was very, very relevant because if you see Dr. Paroda started his own work on pearl millet or sorghum. So, so the man who has started his career in sorghum and then leading in national and international agriculture, getting some way forward in this, these particular crops from his mouth is always a, a popular, what you call a lesson to us, which we should try to bridge. And he very nicely pointed out various key points which uh, Dr. Jacqueline has already summarized. But I would like to say that one of the important points which he made on utilization of germplasm resources and in sorghum breeding, not only in sorghum, but in other crops also. Sir, let me inform you and the gathering sitting here that when I joined here as DP Director General Crop Sciences around a year and a half back and had detailed discussion with BZ Dr. Mahapatra and we, we found that in none of the crops except wheat, uh, some of the pulses and rice, pre-breeding is being done. So we made a point 
and started making programs on directed prey breeding involving wild species and local rank races of all the crops. And not only that, we made a point that now the next five years EFC, there should be a flagship program by all the institutes on pre-breeding activities uh, for various trades. And as I told, it is not a random pre-breeding, but it is a directed pre-breeding for which we have thought. And similar on similar line, uh, our institute, Indian Institute of Millet Research, has also started working on these lines. Because while sitting on these committees, when you refer to the Central Parietal Release Committee, I also chair these committees and also uh, now Parietal Identification Committees. Uh, it was very disappointing to see that most of the lines which our breeders were developing were not surpassing the national and local checks in terms of yield and other traits. And we found a very serious gap, the serious gap in terms of enlarging genetic waste of our gen material, which we are involving in our varietal development program. And we found that again, again, again and again, our breeders are utilizing same parental lines to develop crosses. So we made a point that specific parental lines uh, has to be selected during AICRP meetings and a given task is to be done by a particular center on those lines as far as breeding is concerned. And I'm happy to tell that this year, uh, we made a point that there should be one or two slides on the progress of pre-breeding materials and almost all AICRP projects and institutes projects, they showed uh, their, their commitment and their work on those lines. So rightly pointed out by our speaker, unless we tap the, the genetic resources and germplasm lines or genes scattered in wild species and land races, we have to accumulate all those genes in our varieties so that we can make uh, some headway in this direction. Sir, you rightly pointed out that there should be some consortia uh, projects, consortium projects on, on, on some important topics. And I would like to inform all the gatherings sitting here that Dr. Paroda started a consortium project on hybrids, our hybrid crops, which was somehow stopped somewhere in 2004 and five. But now again, we started and activated this project three years back. And there is a consortium research project on hybrids in different crops, including millets and pearl millet across the institutions. It, it cross boundaries, institutional boundaries, and also even, even different departmental boundaries. Similarly, we, we started a consortium research project on molecular breeding. And many molecular breeding, you see now 71 molecular, uh, this, no, no, sorry, many molecular breeding uh, derived varieties have already been released in many crops, including the sorghum, chickpea, maize, rice, wheat, and also uh, oil seeds. Another important inf important project which we are we have started on consortium research project uh, that is on biofortification, and you rightly pointed out that until as we uh, eliminate nutritional security from this land, it would be uh, we would be fail failing in our duty as a, an agricultural scientist. And sir, in this, with the help of biofortification program and also Harvest Plus program, which was ended a few years back, we accumulated all those research efforts and funded from the council side. And that project is running on more than 15 institutions. And you know, 71 biofortified varieties have already been released, which are enriched in zinc and also iron. 
and as well as protein, higher protein content. So such type of consortia approach <coughs> are always important. And this biofortification project we are doing with not only with ICR, but also Ministry of Health, National Institute of Nutrition, and also NABI, National Agri-Food Biotechnology Institute, Department of Biotechnology Institute, where we would be studying bioavailability of all these micronutrients, whether these are bioavailable in human subject or not. Uh, similarly, uh, a new program which we are starting now because this is an era of technology. Until unless we have a platform to test our technology, it, will, it is very difficult. So this, from this five-year plan, we have planned a, an AICRP on biotech crop with the total outlay of 25 Pro in which equal amount is being committed by Department of Biotechnology Government of India to, to do limited field trials on crops which are on varieties or lines which were developed through transgenics and also genome editing. So this is a very good initiative in which DBT and ICR has come together. And not only that, various advanced center, at least five advanced center on genome editing. We are establishing in the country along with the Department of Biotechnology Government of India, it would be a co-funding with both the organizations. And a new program which we started now in this particular EFC is a network project on emerging diseases and pests. You know the, the, the introduction of fall army worm in India and also the damage it has caused, various virus diseases, then, uh, then also locust is also coming. And there was nobody working on these areas. So we thought of starting new program in these areas so that we can, we can work closely with that. Uh, as far as this millet is concerned, uh, very rightly pointed out by you, sir, and many areas for uh, thought which we have given. But uh, I would like to tell you that the, the initiative which our institute and government has taken on in celebrating International Years of Millet 2023, which was declared by UN, uh, uh, more than 16 ministries and <laughs> departments are working sir you are muted this is a pro uh, this all in the international years of millet is being celebrated and being uh, what you call monitored at the highest level almost every week we have a meeting from pmo and uh, cabinet secretary pmo is chairs that particular meeting and then we have some committees and subcommittees. And in this program, Equiset is actively participating as a knowledge partner. And as I told you that various ministries and uh, departments are participating in this celebration. And we were told that it should not be less than International Yoga Day, which uh, Mr. Modi, our honorable prime minister started a few years back. On that scale, it has to be celebrated. And secretary of all these 16 departments, 15, 16 departments, which includes Ministry of Agriculture, Research and Education, Department of Agriculture and Farmer's Welfare, Ministry of External Affairs, Department of Food Processing, Department of Commerce, Department of Food and Public Distribution, Department of Women and Child Development, Department of Health and Family Welfare, FSSAI, Department of Rural Development, Department of Tourism, Ministry of Tribal Affairs, Department of Information and Broadcasting, Department of Higher Education, Department of School Education and Literacy, Donier, then National Informatics Center, NIC, Ministry of Railways, uh, and also Ministry of Civil Aviation. So all these 17 to 18 ministries, they, they all are participating in the celebration of this International Year of Millet. And we have planned that we would be making internet, our Indian Institute of Millet Research as a uh, international center for millet research and its, its uh, uh, education. And various programs are being planned uh, by Dr. Tonapi and his team, along with uh, ICAR team and a nodal agency, nodal persons have been identified. And all these uh, ministries are taking parts in different areas as per their expertise. 
For example, Ministry of Civil Aviation will, will be uh, having pamphlet and seat jackets of all the flights, meals, uh, millet meals in their snacks, advertisement and announcements of at airport and aircrafts. This is one of the examples I am, I am telling you. And similarly, midday meal program uh, ministry has to start uh, and public distribution will become a part. So in totality, I would like to say that all the guidance which we are getting from our seniors like you and, and mentors like you and uh, the help of the government, I'm sure that in coming few years, uh, millet will not remain as a coarse cereal or, or a food for poor, but it would be a very important uh, uh, diet, uh, part of diet of Indian system and international. Sir, it, is, it was very heartening to note then when Secretary of Food in this particular meeting, when I was also attending this meeting, he told very clearly that millet is either utilized by the poor people, those who are growing it, or the high people of higher strata, because it's very expensive. So we have to target the mid-income group of uh, Indian population who can have purchasing power to buy these products which are coming out of millets. So therefore, we have to make millet as a part and partial of our ongoing program. And at this particular occasion, I would like to say to my scientist colleague that uh, it is, it's a very important day today when we are meeting to celebrate the great uh, NGP Rao Memorial lecture series and, and, and also under the aegis of uh, what you call Society for Military Research. Uh, we, we should not uh, have some sort of complacency which Dr. Proda also emphasized because uh, we have achieved a lot Dr. Tonapi told that we, in spite of the fact that we are, uh, the area is reducing around 60% area has reduced, but our yield is going up because of uh, productivity. So we should not have complacency on our past achievement, but we should look for future challenges very intelligently. And we should prepare our programs to develop high yielding varieties and hybrids uh, resistant to global climate change, short duration with increased micronutrients and protein content varieties amenable to mechanical harvesting or hybrid amenable to mechanical harvesting. Hence, we should speed up the whole process of fast varietal development program by using genomic assisted breeding, transgenics, and genome editing. We should also utilize uh, the speed breeding and high throughput phenotyping platform to hasten the process of uh, varietal development program, which otherwise takes six to seven years. But if we use speed breeding platform, we can advance generation. We can take three to two to three or three to four generation, depending upon crop in a year. So this is very, very important to take lessons from Dr. Paroda's uh, lectures, and I would go further that we need to train human resource in new areas because it's very difficult to now utilize the data which has generated from decoding of genomes, environment, environmental data, or maybe soil data. So to accumulate all these types of data, we need experts in the areas of big data analysis or big data analytics, we need to use artificial intelligence and also internet of things to manage our crops, which is now not far away. And our new breed of scientists, they are very receptive to these new technologies. But emphasize here that we have to train these new breed of scientists in these areas so that in future, our, our, our breeding should be technology driven along with uh, trade, which is uh, very important for the welfare of the society and for the science. So with these few words, I would like to again thank Dr. Paroda for his very thoughtful 
action points and also guidance which he has given we have made a note of all those points and sir uh, not only this we always talk off and on and you are always worried about the indian um, plant breeding programs which we are equally worried our dg and myself and we started pushing our breeders to go beyond what they are doing and let us use uh, all available approaches latest approaches available in our hand to sharpen to speed up and to to uh, what you call scale up our whole breeding program and value addition is very very important and i would like to request dr pranapi to kindly invite dr paroda personally at his, his institute so that he could see the type of work which our fpos and also um, um, our incubation center is doing more than 150 products and linking with family uh, this uh, companies so uh, personally sir if you see those products and the then the, the the area which we are designated and and inaugurated by honorable minister uh, bio information this bio incubation center at ie institute of military research it is a state of the art uh, facility which we have developed there and i am sure that with more emphasis and with more money coming with the initiative of uh, celebration of this uh, year of village along with our international partner ikrisat Uh, i am sure that we will be meeting all the targets and we sh we should always be coming to your expectations so thank you very much dr uh, tonapi thank you jaclyn for giving me opportunity and thank you all for uh, giving me this opportunity to be here in this very important occasion of our ngp uh -huh. memorial lecture series thank you jai hind thank you sir thank you very much for your uh, remarks and uh, also the way forward uh, taking forward from the point uh, dr prada sir's lecture uh, till dr sharma's remarks so now we are coming to the last part of uh, this uh, uh, very important program ngp rao memorial lecture and also ngp rao lifetime achievement award ceremony uh, we are going to uh, going for the vote of thanks uh, to uh, dr hari prasanna yeah yes sir thank you uh, respected uh, chairperson uh, co chair chief guest awardees uh, guests of honor and all the uh, dignitaries who have participated uh, on this uh, virtual uh, ceremony uh, after an impressive memorial lecture and award ceremony and uh, uh, the very grand event i take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of uh, society for military research and uh, indian institute of military research uh, first we place on record our uh, sincere thanks and uh, profound gratitude to the chairperson of today's function dr uh, jacqueline hughes dg krisat who readily accepted our invitation and agreed to preside over the ceremony and spent uh, more than half day with us in spite of being a sunday so that shows how the krisat values uh, dr rao's contribution to hybrid sorghum research and the real concern of krisat towards the sorghum and millets community and the small holder farmers of thailand and the zeal to work for them uh, thank you madam for highlighting the role of these uh, so called uh, forgotten crops in uh, local food systems and uh, the need for diet diversification as a prerequisite for ensuring uh, nutrition security and uh, need for strengthening uh, the value chain system in these crops uh, thank you very much madam for gracing this occasion and sharing your valuable views and providing suggestions for future research thank you uh it is a proud privilege of society to have uh, uh patam bhushan dr raj esparoda as the chief guest for the award ceremony and the first uh, dr ngp rao memorial lecture uh, he readily agreed to our request for delivering the lecture on uh, future of sorghum and millets uh, which is a daunting task keeping in mind the challenges these crops face uh, thank you very much sir for sparing your valuable time Uh, giving you our valuable and impactful insights uh, optimistic perspectives and the directions uh, and for uh, listing the opportunities and uh, policy support required for uh, future of these crops and uh, future strategy uh, for making uh, the gray areas green i am sure the millets fraternity has uh, greatly benefited by your thoughtful lecture and got inspired to gear up further to serve the cause of millets thank you very much sir
thanks are also due for uh, dedication of uh, IAMR crop work facility as uh, NGP Rao Crop Improvement Center and uh, conferment of uh, lifetime achievement awards on the three awardees. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we thank uh, Dr. T. R. Sharma, DDG Crop Science ICR and the co-chair of the session uh, for sharing his uh, insights and concerns for the millets and the action needed towards uh, millets research, starting with the germplasm, pre-breeding, uh, and need for bridging the yield gaps in the present interventions by ICR and also highlighting the programs in the run-up for International Year of Millet. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your valuable guidance and we are sure we will be taking further your uh, aspirations and ambitions. Thank you for being part of this ceremony and uh, giving your valuable sessions and constructive guidance. Uh, the Society thanks the awardees, uh, Dr. B.S. Rana, Dr. A. Sitaram and Dr. K. N. Rai for readily accepting our invitation and making it convenient to attend the virtual ceremony. Uh, we also thank uh, each one of them for sharing their views and future directions for the uh, millets improvement and research in the country. Uh, we will be in touch with them for all future guidance. Thank you very much. Our special thanks to the guest of honor, uh, Dr. Arvind Kumar, uh, DDG Krisat for uh, participating in the ceremony and sharing his ideas and views for millets, the research priorities and the policy push required for these crops. Uh, thank you very much, sir. We profusely thank Dr. N. H. Rao, trustee, NGP Rao Foundation, Hyderabad, uh, for his active participation and support uh, in instituting this award and lecture ceremony and showering the good wishes to the awardees and society and highlighting the role of millets in the present food system, the research efforts, and the renewed policy interests required. So the generous contribution by the foundation towards the award is gratefully acknowledged by the society herewith. Uh, we also extend our sincere thanks to the members of Dr. N. G. P. Rao's family uh, who have joined us for this function. Uh, we thank uh, Dr. Bhupen Dube, CEO of Advanta, uh, unfortunately who could not join today, uh, who has sent his good wishes to today's program. Uh, in fact, we were fortunate to have him here at IAMR a few days back and uh, interact with his team on the sorghum and uh, millet research. Uh, thanks for the generous contribution also to the society by the uh, Advanta for the Dr. N. G. P. Rao Memorial Lifetime Achievement Award. Thanks, Dr. Dubey. Uh, thanks are also due to Dr. Rajendra Prasad, Honorable Vice Chancellor of uh, US Bangalore, uh, who again could not join us today, but he chaired the committee and nominated the names for this prestigious award. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your valuable contribution to the society's endeavor. Uh, I take this opportunity to thank uh, other dignitaries who joined us today. Uh, I could see stalwarts, uh, Professor R.P. Singh, Dr. Bagmal, uh, Dr. S.K. Vassal, and many former Vice Chancellors, uh, DDGs and ADGs from ICR headquarters, uh, directors from various ICR institutes, uh, project coordinator Paul Millet, then former directors, former project coordinators, uh, retired scientists, scientists from ACRP centers, from voluntary centers, uh, many scientists from other ICR institutes, ICRISAT, and other CG systems and private sector, uh, my own colleagues from IAMR and everyone who joined this uh, online platform and made this uh, event a grand show. Uh, at a point, we had uh, nearly 300 members on this uh, platform. So the society is grateful to each one of you for making it convenient, uh, though it is Sunday to join this program. Uh, we thank Dr. Telochan Mahapatra, Secretary Dair and the DG ICR for his uh, consent and support for this ceremony. Unfortunately, he could not join us due to other prior commitments at IRA today because uh, Teachers Day is being celebrated on a big way in uh, IRA every year. Uh, finally, I wish to thank uh, the office bearers of the Society for Millet Research who are uh, directly or indirectly associated with uh, today's function. And especially Dr. Vilas Tonapi, the General Secretary and Director of IAMR, uh, who is the guiding spirit behind uh, this endeavor and always leads from the front. So thank you, sir, for your motivation and thrust and uh, the aptitude to take everyone together on board. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, finally, once again, I thank uh, each one of you from the bottom of my heart for making this event a grand success. So thank you very much once again. Eat millets and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we will meet on the next occasion. Thanks for your time. I think almost, sir, two and a half hours we spent for this particular occasion. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank thank you, you Dr. Tudor. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Success. Thank you. Heartiest congratulations to all the awardees.